Praise God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given to us. Lord, Abba Father, we thank you. We praise you for this wonderful opportunity that we have to gather here to study your word, to listen to the word. Lord, Holy Spirit, we believe that it is everything of you spoken and nothing of our own. Because, Lord, we don't want this word to be any of our private interpretation. But we want it to be the revelation, the interpretation that you have given to us. Help us, O Lord, to live our lives only for you. Lord, we want to do what is right. We want to do your will. But Lord, there are many a times where we are deceived by the lies of the devil. And so even though we want to do your will, we don't. Lord, we want to depend on your strength and ability. Because today we understand, Lord, that with our own strength and ability, we fail. But with your power and with your strength, we can succeed. I believe, Lord Jesus, that it is your word that is transforming and changing our lives completely. And I believe that as we are studying this word, this word is bringing mighty, mighty change in our families, in the lives of our loved ones. And I believe that this word is working and that you are working with us, confirming every word with science or company. I thank you, Abba Father. I praise you and I glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, I'll ask a question, okay? Do we have the mind of Christ? Nilan, do you have yes. the mind of Christ? Yes. Neva, do you have the mind of Christ? Yes. Do we all have the mind of Christ? Yes. Okay. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? have the mind of Christ means think according what Christ did. We have to think uh, like whatever we think should be, how would Christ deal in that situation? How would Jesus deal in that situation? So whatever we think should be as if that we are Jesus and that like we are thinking about Jesus itself. Yes, but we are not like Jesus. Jesus. We are like Jesus, correct? Like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Let's go to Philippines chapter 2. We'll get the answer over here. Philippines chapter 2, verse 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I'll put the full chapter, verse number 2. Would anyone like to read? I'll, yeah. Yes. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Okay, so see this. Fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now, we have to learn how to always be like Jesus. Having the mind of Christ means what? Being like Jesus. Okay. Here the Bible says, Paul is saying, he's asking us and he's telling us, the only one thing that I want you to do, the only one uh, joy that I have and you fulfill my joy, that is be like-minded means what come in agreement with the lord see when we say agreement prayer agreement prayer doesn't have to mean agreeing with somebody okay agreement prayer can be i agree with the holy spirit and i receive the miracle i receive the manifestation see we always think that agreement Prayer is between two or three people. 
But actually, agreement, when you have the mind of Christ, you are coming into agreement with the Holy Spirit on the word of God. And coming into agreement with the Lord means being like-minded. Having the same love. Having the same mind. Having the same mindset. If my mindset is, I'm sick. And if the mindset of the word of God of God is, by the wounds of Jesus, you have been healed. If I am not agreeing with the word, then I don't have the mind of Christ. Rather, I am in disagreement with the Lord. If my mindset is, I'm cursed. Okay, I, I, you know, because of my generations, I'm cursed. But is the word of God saying that today Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law because today we are no longer born and we are no longer from uh, the DNA of our mother and the father and our grandparents and our great-grandparents and our great-great-grandparents. We no longer have the DNA of our grandparents or great-grandparents. We have the DNA of our father in heaven. Our father in heaven never lives in curse. And because of that, today I also never live in curse. This is what it means to have the mind of Christ. Many a times what happens is we use the scripture, I have the mind of Christ, only for my studies. No, no, no. It, this mind of Christ is in every area of our lives. Because let me tell you, God wants us to be successful in every area of our lives. But God can only help us to live that life that he has promised when we come into agreement with him. Because now when we are coming into agreement with him and his word, we are giving him the access for him to work in our life and bring the manifestation and change our lives completely. But the moment we are coming into agreement with the lies of Satan, we are giving access to a demonic spirit of, you know, giving access to Satan, to that demonic spirit of fear, worry, anxiety to take control of my life. And to lead me into a direction where it will take me to the pit and destroy me. So it is so very important for us to come in agreement with the Lord. To come into agreement with the Holy Spirit. And to come into agreement with the body of Christ. One of the main things that destroys us in the body of Christ is difference of opinions. Difference of opinions, differences, conflicts between us. But let me tell you, did Jesus ever have a conflict between anybody? An argument? Never. Now you might think, well, Jesus had an argument against the Pharisees. Jesus never argued with them. He just told them what was right. Jesus told them what was right, but he never stood there making sure they believed that what was right. In the if he would have he... stood there, wait, uh, the I'm not okay. If he would have stood there waiting for them to believe what Jesus is saying, believe what he's saying, that means he's arguing and trying to make them believe that what he's saying is right and what they are saying is wrong. But Jesus never did that. He never forced anyone. Okay, what's an argument? An argument is where somebody forces the other to believe something, to agree with something. But Jesus never forced anyone. It was their choice. Yeah, Neelan? What did you want to say? Yes. It was Neva. Ah, yeah. Yes, Neva. Yes. Like when Jesus talked to the Pharisees, he did not argue with them. In the sense, he corrected them. Correct. He corrected them. He showed them what is right, but he did not force them saying, this is what is right and this is how you're supposed to live. It was their choice. And so in the same way in the kingdom of God, it is our choice. God has given us the choice whether we want to be like-minded, agreeing with him, one with him, or we can agree with the lies of the enemy. It is our choice. And that's why the Bible says we be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord. 
See, God is always going to tell you what is right. But God is never going to force you to believe what is right. He is speaking to us, but he cannot force any one of us. It is our choice whether we are going to be in one accord with him and his people, the people, the body of Christ, or if we are going to be one with the lies of the enemy, believe those lies and lies of the enemy. And let me tell you, you, you may think you're just, you know, this is some words. No, no, no. You are giving access to a demonic spirit to take control of your life and to destroy your life. And that's why Jesus clearly said, repent. You know what repent means? Come, come in agreement with God. And why did Jesus say repent? Repent. Come in agreement with God. And if you don't come in agreement with God, there will be disaster. There will be destruction. There will be poverty. There will be fear. It is so important for us to live our life committed to the word of God. It is so important for us to live our life being of one accord, having one mind, having one mind of Christ. And he did not stop there. Okay, he continues to speak in verse 3. Verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, verse 6. If you see this whole, you know, scriptures, even verse 9, he speaks about the name of Jesus. You know, let's continue reading verse 3. Let nothing, let nothing be done through strife or in glory. I'll ask you a question. Is there many strife? Is there a lot of strife between us? Yes. Please put your videos on and sit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a lot of strife between us? Between us in the body of Christ, is there a lot of strife? Yes. What is that strife? That we don't agree to each other. We want our own way. Stubbornness. Correct. The strife that we have with one another is being stubborn. Don't we be stubborn with each other? An example, okay. Neil and Neva, okay, let's say for an example, you are both sitting for the meeting. Neva wants the phone like this. Nalan wants the phone like that. And now you keep on fighting over the phone. What happens? Is there stubbornness? I want it this way. And then you're saying, no, 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 I want it this way. Correct? Now, you go on and on with that argument. You go on and on with that stubbornness. Will it benefit you in any way? You might get what you, what you wanted. You might get the phone the way you wanted, okay? You might get to keep the phone the way you wanted. But let me tell you, after the meeting ends, is there going to be any point of all that uh, stubbornness that you had? No, right? So, in other words, according to the scripture, there is no point of being stubborn in the world. Right? When I'm stubborn, it doesn't, it doesn't bring an answer to the situation. It doesn't uh, bring a solution to the problem. It just brings more people into disagreement and argument. And that's what Satan wants. Because he knows if I can bring these people of Christ in disagreement with each other, then I can destroy their lives. But that's why it is so important. See, is it wrong to be stubborn? Yeah, no. Why no? Because uh, if we are stubborn in the word, right? So even if devil comes, we won't be like we won't be uprooted from the word. Okay. It is very, very important for us to be stubborn in the word. Just like uh, when you're stubborn in the world, you're fighting over something. I want it this way. No, no, no. I want it this way. And I want it that way. Correct? But when you're stubborn in the kingdom of God, in other words, you're saying, I will only agree with what God says, no matter what I can see around me. 
we focus too much on what others think we focus too much on what others will say let me tell you today the biggest deliverance is deliverance from what others will think and what others will say the biggest deliverance because rather than focusing on what he said and she said you begin to spend time focusing on what god said you know i remember this one incident where when i was in india okay my grandmother said uh, you know you have to whenever you're praying over food okay because we always pray over food right whenever you're praying over food you always have to bow your head and you always have to join your hands and you always have to pray like that very sincere very nice i asked her from when did you learn that who said that i asked her okay she said well everybody is doing it so we are also supposed to do i said i am not going to do what others are doing if you want to speak to me you tell me what i have to do what christ is doing i asked her which scripture in the bible says you have to pray like that if you want to pray like that don't pray because others are praying it's not about whether you're praying like that or not praying like that that's not what is wrong what is wrong over there is not about how you pray what is wrong about that is looking at what others say i'm not saying don't pray like that but what i was trying to tell her is don't look at what others say and that's why i asked her which scripture says that and that's when i told her if you really want to do what others tell you then you do what christ is telling you if you really want to do what others are telling you if you really have that type of desire then you do what god tells you to do you see how how we are focusing ourselves so much on the lies of the enemy and then experiencing destruction that's why every time she would come and tell me things my grandmother okay i would ask her does the bible say does the scripture say then you come and speak to me because i don't want to allow anything that is not in the scripture correct would she get angry with you sometimes yes but i'll ask you a question am i come to please people or am i come to please god god yes i'm not saying i'm not saying i ignore my grandmother no 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 i love her okay i'm not saying i don't love her but i'm saying i don't want to allow any word contradicting to the word of god to come in i love her but i'm going to listen to only what the bible says okay i'm not saying you know you get angry and you ignore and then you know uh, don't listen to them no i'm not saying the bible says children be obedient to your elders i'm not saying i'm not obedient but i'm saying i'm only going to agree with the word i'm only going to be obedient to the word yes praise god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you so that's what the bible says you be like minded what do you have to do be like minded how to be like minded how to be, be like minded like, yeah uh see two people will give a choice okay i'm giving just an example one person can humble himself and obey to the other's choice right yeah see what do you mean by like minded is having obeying what god says i'll give an example nilan do you go to school i'm going to go at 29th year not yet okay not yet but i go okay so after a few days you'll be starting again now yeah yeah now when you go to school do you obey all that your teacher tells you no no if the te- if the teacher tells you sit in the space will you not obey will you say no 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 i am not going to sit in that place will you talk to her will you give back to her no no okay. no or you will no. obey right will obey we will obey means whatever she is telling you to do in the class you obey yes. yes yes now why do you obey 
because if we don't obey then we'll have punishment we'll have punishment so in the kingdom of god are we supposed to obey yes and if you don't obey what happens you get punishment hallelujah <laughs> no, no. you are the loser actually if you don't obey see in the kingdom of god when you don't obey it's not that god is going to get all angry at you and say you know you did not obey now i'll teach you a good lesson i know what to do to you god is never going to say that god is a loving god okay but nothing should be done through strife nothing should be done where i disobey god with my own arrogance i have to obey him if i don't obey him if i fall because we will fall we are not always perfect when i don't obey him it's not that god is punishing me but he but he has forgiven i have to make a decision to repent and receive the forgiveness that he has given hallelujah i have a doubt yes it's not related to this but then like i've heard that in i think in mark or matthew i'm not sure when jesus cast out a demon from uh, person and then the pharisees told he casts out demon by belzebul but then jesus uh, jesus told you can uh, like you you should not uh, what it tell should not speak against the holy spirit anyone who speaks against the holy spirit will not be forgiven so in that case you will not be forgiven or you will be forgiven is jesus trying to say something or he's telling directly okay what jesus is trying to say there is he is not saying god will not forgive you if you speak against the holy spirit it's, he is not saying god will not forgive you he is saying you will not be forgiven you know what that means god has forgiven you but because you committed sin and you spoke against the holy spirit what you did is you activated the consequence of that and that is you will not be forgiven but it is not that god is not willing to forgive you yes god is god wants to forgive you but because you spoke against the holy spirit you blocked that forgiveness to come into your life understood so because of that one thing you land in hell yeah because he, because you that means in other words when you speak against the holy spirit that means you don't believe in the holy spirit and unbelief is the sin that takes us to hell correct so if you don't believe in the holy spirit that is unbelief and that unbelief is the biggest sin okay that takes you to hell so if you are not going to, if you are, if you are speaking against the holy spirit that you that means you don't believe and now because you don't believe that means you will end up in the pits of hell now can i blame on god saying god you know Uh, send me to hell no 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 it is because i spoke contradicting the consequence came and because of that now i can't receive the forgiveness that god has already given see for an example when adam and eve ate the fruit after that god punished them correct that's what we think okay but god did not punish they only opened the door for punishment yeah when you know there is one scripture that says you know god punished them and many people ask how, how is it then that scripture means okay not that god was actually punishment punishing them that scripture means who created that law though who created that law if you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall surely die who created the law god god created so when they ate the fruit they died that means god killed them that's what we think but actually what the scripture is saying is god created the law and because god created the law when they committed sin they activated that law that god had created and received that punishment that consequence in their life so just like how they received the consequence for their sin when you speak against the holy spirit you are blocking the forgiveness and receiving the consequence for that unbelief Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. Any questions? Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. So then we'll continue with the Thanksgiving prayer for today's session. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you above Father. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus we thank you we praise you for this 
another opportunity that we had to gather here to listen to your word, to study your word. Lord, we thank you for teaching us this truth. I believe, Lord, that we are blessed in everything that we do. We are blessed to prosper. We are blessed to succeed. And I believe, Lord, that as we are prospering and succeeding today, we are no longer stubborn, but we have the mind of Christ. We are like-minded and we can receive what your word has promised for us. I thank you, Father, for this amazing day that you have given to us. And I believe that we are blessed in this day to be a blessing to the nations. I thank you and praise you and glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, believing, Lord, that you have heard us and that we are able to live our lives for you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we'll pray in tongues. Praise the Lord. Horabaraba. See you on two. Glory.